Ready to all podcast. Hey, Chris, what's up? Hey, we are back again. You weren't supposed to be here this week, but you are. And so here yeah. we are. We had a little little setback, so it's okay. Everything for good reason. So, hey, before we jump into it, prep yourself for success. That's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, I'm live on uh, on our – I went over to Instagram, went live on Detailing Success. So you guys aren't going to be able to see the screen. Uh, if Chris and I are talking, probably not going to be able to real well. Anybody who wants to go over and join us on Facebook or YouTube Live, we're also there. So let's jump into it. So I know what's on that shirt. Yeah, this, this is a – it's a 60, 67 Shelby. It's either a GT500 or 350. I don't know which. Um, I don't think that's important, but it's a Shelby. Yeah. Yeah, what a great car. You know? But, uh, you know, yeah, this is a cool one. I like this one. Not that those were ever cheap, but you could pick up – a an original 350 or 500 back when I was going to the Pomona's Watt meet for a reasonable price, you know, in today's word, cheap. So, so, Hey, so last week, um, you had a little wind last night. We've had, we had great weather. It was a little breezy cooler this morning and actually a little cold. And then last week we had a great group here. We had our five day and then this, we're supposed to be on vacation this week. We had a little, my brother, just we just got my brother home from the hospital last night, so he's with us. So, oh, he's yeah. back. Yep, he's back. And uh, you know, it's where we come from. A lot of people have to wear ankle bracelets. And it's not for jewelry, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> he's got to wear a whole damn vest. You know, it's pretty bad when they're tracking you the vest. But yeah, he's got to be monitored for the next, you know, until he can have surgery. But he's back home, and we had a great training week. Man, what a great people last week. Uh, and then we go right back in. This is one of the months we do a double five day. So we're back in another great group next week. And uh, and then the following week, we're up at the rag company. And then I'm taking a couple days. And uh, I've got a, uh, we're not going to let the cat out of the bag, but somebody joining me for a ski trip up to Sun Valley, their first time skiing Sun Valley. So matter of fact, a couple oh. of industry people I think are going to go. So, hey, so let's talk about uh, yourself for success and what it takes. A lot of people. You know, a lot of people had a front row seat to success, maybe in parents or a family member or so, so, so forth. Some of us, not so much. I, I'll be honest. I was really lucky because um, I started cleaning airplanes. And a lot of people, even back in the 70s and 80s, that had airplanes were contractors or business people or attorneys. So I got to start through osmosis, starting to learn from them. But, you know, the biggest problem I had was I didn't believe. I always thought that I would just be that guy. Um, I kind of dreamed small back in those days, but, you know, I mean, as long as I had that mongoose, you know, uh, motocross, uh, 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 BMX bike, I was happy, but you know, it, I, I got to see it and it started getting me a hunger for what they had. You know, um, I remember this one guy, uh, just when cell phones weren't even, nobody had cell phones. I remember being blown away because he was just constantly taking business calls. And it, I was just blown away that he had a cell phone, you know, and, and that tells you how much we've changed in life. But, you know, you can't just be you've got to put a system. Everything's a system in process. It's an SOP. Right. And so I've got this saying it's called smart being smart. And so what it stands for is S is systematic and systematic. You've got to be systematic in your knowledge. You've got to be systematic financially. What, what do I mean by knowledge? You know, so many people go off of tribal knowledge. They're just going after what their little circle knows. You've got to get outside of that circle and see what other circles know. You know, there's going to be a lot of knowledge inside of great circles. There's great circles out there. But what what questions can you ask the other circles? What, you know, what influences? I always love to speak with, with big business people because they've got such a unique view on small business. And sometimes you can take some magical things away from that. So on the systematic side, knowledge, uh, financially, you've got to be financially uh, systematic about income and you got to be systematic about outcome, what's going out. You got to be systematic about what you're saving, what you're projecting, what you want to hit, what your goals are, uh, what you're spending, what your needs are, all those things, with different financial systematic items that you need to think about. And then markability, you know, what, what are you able to market? What's the uniqueness? What's your niche? What's, what, what are you going after? You know, is are you developing you? What's your reputation within all this? It's got to be something on the systematic side of all of this, even your reputation. And then one of the most important things is connectability, is that 
are you building up trust? I often say, when I took my, my, my businesses to a level of trust with my customers, where I really concentrated on building up the trust factor, the trust they had in us, is it really changed the game for us. It really took us to a whole nother level. We had a lot of high-end clients, and, and now we've got a lot of just high-end entrepreneurs that we absolutely love. And if we give them bad advice, it's going gonna, it's gonna to not play out so well. So they've learned to trust us and building up that trust and that reputation organically. And there's a big problem that I see today is a lot of people want to go out there and they're building up. You know, it's really, I hate to say it, it's really easy these days to go out and build up a reputation online. And and you never know what you get, kind of like a, a you know a box of Cracker Jacks. You don't know what the little gift's going to be in there when you need to meet somebody. Now, you can tell some people online by their presence and their speak and, and what they're doing. But, you know, it's really easy to buy shit to make yourself look fancy. And so many people uh, go out there and they try to pay uh, to build up their reputation when, when you really want to do it organically. The thing that people don't like about that is it takes time. But that foundation is so important. And we found time and time again, it's happening again in our industry right now. I just noticed that somebody just hung it up. Somebody with a good reputation hung it up. And the reason why is they're struggling. And everything that we've seen was kind of, it's, it, and it's not even really in, de in the detailing industry. It's a sub-industry of that. But everything we've seen has basically been fake. It's bullshit because they didn't have any longevity. And, and so what they're doing is all that was not built up organically. So that was S within the smart M methodical. You have to be methodical, absolutely methodical. Now check this out. You have to be methodical and, and, and profitable within your workmanship is that I always preach about, you know, you gotta be a business person, gotta be a business person. If you don't know what you're doing or you're overdoing it, there's a, there's a fine line there. It's because you've gotta be profitable, but you have to know what you're doing. And then you've gotta be methodical within your relationship management is that believe it or not is you've got to maintain those people that are doing business with you is that you've got to maintain that relationship you can't just go out and get it and keep it the other thing i notice a lot of people doing is that so many detailers are just creating new customers constantly a a, a pathway of new customers and while having new customers is really important how you service your existing customers your past customers is just as important if not more important and a lot of people totally ignore that so you've got to be methodical about that customer experience is i think this is one of this probably should have been down at the, up at the top or down at the bottom is it's you know right now it's so loud out there and there's so much going on in the world and we've got covid and we've got masks and we've got protests and we've got truckers and we've got uh dudes starting wars and attacking people we've got death and we've got viruses and we've got new viruses and we've got shot number what do we have to what four shot number four we got all these <laughs> all these loud all this shit loud stuff going on right i can't even count to keep track of it you know is 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 is, is what's going on we got riots protests and i i mean i don't you can't keep track of what damn season it is you know and and so it's a i don't know it's a really bad episode of twilight zone but we've got all this noise going but yet We've got a decision, and that decision is good customer service is cheap. It's pretty much free. And the experience, now the experience, you can go with a really high-end experience. That's going to cost you a little bit of money, not a lot, but it's going to cost you money to have a high-end experience. But just a smile and a thank you, even if you're beginning and you're brand new, is that just solid having a great experience where it's you're letting, reminding them that you're going to be there. You're telling them what you're going to do. You're giving them little snapshots into what you're doing. You're texting them, have an open shop where they come in and see what you're doing. And, and then you're following up with them the next day and you're, you're showing them and educating them. All those things are an experience and that's all methodical. And then follow through is that on all of this is that you've got to take and look through the follow through. You've got to constantly keep doing it. You can't start it and stop, start it and stop. Is that on your workmanship, it's got to be, it's got to be very even. Whatever your niche is, you've got to keep that balanced. And then on your on your relationship management and your customer experience, you've got to follow through on those things. You got to keep them going. And believe me, as you get more and more and more successful, it's harder and harder to keep you get more balls in the air. It's harder to keep those things going. So at some point, again, I always say it's but I like to serve fewer better, is that you know, raise your prices, do different things. Eliminate the customers that are taking up your time that aren't willing to pay. 
there's different things to allow yourself to kind of mellow out and make all of those things better within the methodical side of it. And then also, this is something that I don't always add into it is what's the next opportunity? Always be methodical on looking at what you're going to be. What's next is I've got a thousand things up in here at any given time. I mean, a thousand things. And I probably add two or three, three things to it a day. Some of them will never happen, but they're great ideas. Start there. I mean, great things, great opportunities, great profit points, happiness, smile, things. You've got to be taking and thinking ahead and methodical about the next opportunity, what that opportunity is. And then so we've got S, M, now A, aggressive. You've got to be aggressive. And that, that doesn't mean in a negative. Aggressive's got such a, a condescending word. It's got such a bad reputation. But you've got to be aggressive. You've got to be confident. Is you've got to believe in your mission. You got to believe what you're selling. You got to believe what you're delivering. You got to believe what you're 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 asking of people. You've got to believe in your market. You got to believe in your customers. You got to believe in your staff. Is that you've got to take and have confidence in all that. Also, don't know what the brakes are. You can take your foot off the accelerator, but don't don't pump the brakes. You'd be scary. Don't pump the brakes. Learn, learn, learn how to drive. It's just like going to driving school. They're going to show you that apex. Learn that apex in business is learn how to take and in, in, in worst case scenario, you know, when I went to, when I went to middle, middle Ohio, that was the most aggressive braking program I'd ever gone through in my life. Man, you're coming in there hot hundred miles an hour and right where the instructor's standing and he's on a radio and he's speaking to you and he'll say, stomp him or stomp. And I mean, it was like, I'm never going to stop. But guess what? We slowed down just enough to successfully get through that corner very quickly, rapidly, and was right back on the gas. And so if you're going to have to take it, slow down a little bit, stop it, and then go again. Don't don't know where, don't get comfortable with that brake pedal. Don't start overanalyzing things because you got to be aggressive. Build not only your business stronger, but build you as a person stronger. This doesn't mean just in, in business education. This means and people skills. This means in vocabulary. This means in, and again, your workmanship. This means you as a person. This means within your hobbies. This means within the ways that you, you, you support your community. This means the way you support your family. This means the things you do for yourself, the thoughts that enter your mind. You've got to build yourself up. And then also be the most aggressive business person in your community. Not detailer, because a lot of detailers aren't aggressive. A lot of detailers aren't active is I want you to be one of the most active small businesses within your entire marketplace is I've got a lot of examples of that I, I'd be I'd be rude to take and mention one because there's so many people that are that active that they've really taken change detailing within their market because they're not just acting like a detailer they're just they're they are all over supporting their 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 where their community where they do business at is that Make others think, this is really important, make your competition think, how the heck does he or she do it? Be so intense, so aggressive, so deeply rooted in the community, so forward thinking in business, so connected to your customers, such a great uh, customer experience, such great follow through that your competition keeps going, how? How do they do it? Keep them wondering. Keep them thinking a little bit about you. And honestly, I, I don't really think about my competition. We talk about them every once in a while, right, Chris? Every once in a while, we'll see something pop up. We know what's going on in the marketplace. Then, oh, hey, yeah. you're going to run the race. I'm going to run mine. Right? Yep. We're, you got you got to you got to be aware of what they're doing. You know. Yeah. I mean, you just it's it's part of being smart. Sometimes what they're doing will make us better if we see something that they're that they're doing, we'll adapt to it. Not too often. We like to be trendsetters, but there's times where people will, will sit there. And the best thing that happens is like this last few months, we've seen everybody all of a sudden jump on. Well, we're the only we're the only training program that talks business, and I just giggle because business and marketing and, and, and entrepreneurship has been at the center since our very first training, 16, 17 years ago. So you know what's obvious? Either a, they're just downright disrespectful not being honest or be they didn't do their homework they don't know what they don't they don't know what's out there shame on them i i like it because um you know we've been a leader in that area i don't get my panties in a bunch because they say that is i know what i am i don't worry about it i'm running my own race that's what you've got to do i'm very i'm confident i'm aggressive we're aggressive we're confident 
is we're not worried about what they're doing. We want to better it. And if they've got something going on that's cool, well, I want to know about it. I'm more about knowing what they're doing that's cool than what they're doing bad. Because a lot of people do just don't aren't falling through. That's the hard part. And so add force multipliers. What's a force multiplier? Your customers. People that believe in you, what they're going to do is they're going to take and they're going to share the good news of you and your business and your services. Is that when you treat people well and you take and and and, and give a great product, guess what? They're a force multiplier because they're going to be out there saying great things about you, hopefully, and ask them to do that. Ask them to say great things and to refer people to you. That's how we, we build our small mom and pop main street businesses is by referring each other and it's really really important we do that and then on that now we've got we've got s m a now what's up next r smart right is is we've got to be respectful is the r stands for respectful we got to be respectful of our industry we got to respect be respectful of our mentors and our role models people that have meant a lot or have done things and given anything even if you've never met them be respectful of that and pay it forward. Let them know. Let others know. Our industry is you've got to be respectful of our industry. There's a lot of people that worked hard to raise this industry up, including you. And I will not tolerate, you know, these people that go out and just do verbal judo on brands uh, or on, 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 on personalities, or on people, uh, on other companies. I think that's the most, I think that's the, the one of the biggest downfalls and, and shortcomings of our industry is that we allow that kind of conversation is that I just think mud throwing and I think it shows just how uh, immature that we can be. And when I see it, I don't get in an argument with the person. I simply go over. I block them and delete the post over. Uh, they're not going to hear. And enough people do that. Guess what? That person's gone. They're out of the picture. They're out of the equation. They can no longer they can no longer take a pee in our in our industry pool. You know, is they're out of it. They don't have a voice anymore. Is that you've got to be very respectful of your thoughts. The way you think of yourself, and I know I talk about this a lot, is because I've taken and slowed down my own process by having stinking thinking of myself. Is that you've got to take, and it goes two ways, is that you can't be overconfident, but you also take and you've got, you can't, you've got to be confident. You can't, you got to believe you're going to be able to do this and you've got to take and stop telling yourself you need to quit or that you're not going to be able to do this or that you're going to fall, fall short or that you don't deserve it. You've got to be respectful through, for, of your thoughts. And then you've got to be respectful of your actions is that when you take a stand for something, stand up and be proud of that. Now, if it was the wrong stand and the wrong move, just own it and move on. Don't worry about it. it it's, most people are going to forget about it. You're going to be the one that's hammering it, your, uh, on it yourself. You're going to beat yourself up more than other people. Most people, by the time that you're on the third or fourth time thinking of it out of a hundred, they've already forgot about it. And if people do bring it up after you've apologized, well, it just tells you again, I go back to the previous comment, that person's got other motives. That person's struggling with something. That person's vengeful and hateful for a reason. Get over it. Get over it. Be respectful of your, your thoughts and your actions. This is one of the most important things is be respectful of your time. You know, it's an asset that we just, we just, we have such limited. And as you age, you're going to realize that it really goes by what your, what your, your parents said, what your grandparents said, what people older than you have said that it goes by so fast. It does. It does. Especially, and Chris will agree with this, Chris, when you have kids, right? It just oh, seems yeah. to you, you know, know, you know, I was, uh, we were just talking last night. If we make it to Idaho this summer. Cameron will turn 15. And I think in Idaho, you can drive at 15, right? You can. So, yeah. Yeah. You can. I, I just can't, I just can't believe he'll, he'll be at that point in life already. It happened right. fast. And it does <laughs> even, even having, you know, dogs, uh, souls in your life, you know, everything elevates and it shows you how quickly life's going to go by and that you gotta be, you gotta be so protective. And I hear these people talk about, again, I've said this before is, you know, hammer things out in your twenties. So you got the rest of your life to do it, man. You know, I don't know. I did. I, I I did pretty good in my 20s. I had a really good balance, and I I built I built a nice little micro empire, and I did a lot of things. I was out chasing my dreams and my passions, and 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 success just seemed to find me. When I got all balled up in my 30s, it took most of my 40s to fix my 30s. Steve Harvey just said that. I'm borrowing that from Steve Harvey. Is that you know what? Just go after it naturally and take little breaks. Put it in there. We we 
I know you're going to work hard. I'm not saying not to. Is that you know it it it's I managed to to squeak out even on these bid. This is a really busy month. You know we got a lot going on. Training last week. Um, I've got some some military stuff to do this weekend. I've got training next week. I'm up at the Rag Company event the following week. Very very busy. And so we've just been going going going. It's okay. We're going to find out some 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 little squeak uh, sneak outs. You got to take that time away. Take comp time. You know, a lot of and a lot of companies give comp time. So you work overtime, they'll give you comp time in return. Entrepreneurs can do the same thing. If you have a 50, 60 hour week, just credit yourself back 10 or 20 hours. And so that you can go have time. We all have downtimes. Take advantage of that time. And so, and then respect for the people around us. And what I mean by this is that realize that if you're an A type and you've got to respect and, and give a little bit of credit to those that aren't quite at that level is that I've had a, a real a real hard lesson in my life has been that I've got a tremendous amount of drive and energy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of new ideas. And to some people, that's a weakness. They don't like that. They the man throw a million things up. You got to me, I got to see what sticks. But you know what? Not everybody thinks that way. Not everybody's going to work as hard as you do. Not everybody's going to be as dedicated as you are. Not everybody's going to have the eye and attention to detail the eye for detail and the attention to detail that you have. And so it's like me walking by a piece of garbage on a street or a sidewalk or entry or parking lot. I, I can't do it. I, I just, I can't, I can't look. Now, if you go to different parts of this country is good luck. Cause you're going to sit there with the, you know, you'd have to have a trash truck uh, in your back pocket to pick up all the trash. But, you know, it, that's a pet peeve for me. Not everybody's like that. And so you got to realize that and give a little respect. T, this is the last part and smart, is tenacious. I love this word, tenacious. And what the definition is, is tending to keep firm hold of something, clinging or adhering closely, is tenacity in everything you do. Everything you do is, is have purpose and meaning in absolutely everything. Because I really don't think that you can get through life saying I'm going to be tenacious in business and then meek and mild in others. I really don't because I think what's going to happen is the meek and mild is going to take and come over into everything. Now, when I say tenacity, you don't need to be allowed, you know, go into a room and disrupt everything kind of person. But you've got to take in. I think people need to see your confidence. I think they need to feel your confidence. I think they need to feel the energy and that I think people need to know that you're all you're all about business, whatever that business is, whether it's fun whether it's going out on the lake water skiing, whether it's going out uh, and you're going bass fishing, whether it's skiing, whatever, whatever, you know, uh, uh, taking and going to to a, a car event and making your car look amazing you know, as you go. Um, I think that you've got to do everything in your life with absolute tenacity. And and, and, and I love that word. Um, again, a million ideas is that you've got to master some things. You can't keep coming up and throwing things onto the fire to cook when you haven't finished your first meal is that you've got to get good at something but constantly look at what other opportunities are there um i don't know maybe that's cost me some in life but man it's been fun i've enjoyed it i love it i love having lots of ideas like i couldn't couldn't imagine quieting my mind down and not having ideas i just, I just couldn't i just i love it i love put, making notes i make notes every night i write successful people that I've been able to have the blessing of meeting have done the same thing. You know, it was pretty, it was pretty cool is, 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 is meeting, you know, one of the world's richest individuals and being so scared, Warren Buffett, we had him as a client for, for a couple of times. And, and he had a, he carried a little notebook and, and he said he wrote his ideas down in that notebook. And he said that he showed it to me. And then I was in his presence, not, not too much time later, a couple hours later. And I, all of a sudden I saw him, there, there were some people talking. And all of a sudden, I, t I see him take it out. He opens it up. He writes something down. He puts it back in, and he was done. And I was like, okay, what did he? What just sparked an idea with him? What? What's? What's? What's a guy like that? What's he write down? I mean, wouldn't you love to get into that notebook on a person like that and read some of those ideas? And and it was an amazing oh. fact. He said he filled several of them up a year. Could you? Could you imagine getting to go through those things? Oh my gosh. I mean, that was just, I asked him, I asked him if I could, and he just laughed. Take that as a no, you know, uh, I was young and, you know, it was, it was, it was fun. I, I'd worked my way up to where he'd been around me a couple of times. So I knew it was good. And so 
Um, success. Let's talk about success. These are the takeaways. Success be, uh, really, it hits you when you relax, when you become totally comfortable in 100% authentically you. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart, is that you might have, how, how do I, you might have riches, but, but without it being organic and 100% authentic, you're not going to have wealth. And to me, there's a big difference between riches and wealth is be 100% authentically you and be proud of that. Success comes when they see both you and your business grow. Is not when they just see you running a, a, a successful business, but when they see you running a successful life. There's two different things. And for me, that's got great meaning. And I think that I, I, I've talked to client, uh, people that were clients that are now friends, mentors, coaches, and everything else. And it, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, they've told me they're really they're proud. Of, uh, they're, you know, I just had one of my mentors just tell me this the other day is they're really most proud of the man I've become versus the things that I've built up. Um, and, and, and that really meant a lot to me. Uh, success comes when you help the others reach your same level or even go higher. Is I've, I've coached uh, and coaching and mentoring people right now currently. They're going to blow past me. And, and I love that. I'm not threatened by that. That's what I want. And I, I hope I've got a front row seat to see that happen with them is that I want them to just hit the moon and keep going. And so you've got to turn around and you might say, well, I'm not successful. I don't have wealth. I don't have this. Listen, if you've got a business that's paying the bills, 100% paying the bills and you're moving ahead, you need to show other people how to do that and help them do that because a lot of people are struggling just to get to that level. Give yourself some credit. That's a huge accomplishment, but you need to turn it around, pay it back and help other people do that. Influence them. Now, word of caution, if people don't take your advice and every time you turn around and you're giving them input and they're going doing something else, cut the chain to that anchor. That's dragging bottom. You don't need that. You know, and if they keep just bringing emotions into it, emotions into it, and emotions into it, and they're just they're spinning their wheels with it, that's over. You've got it. You can't you can't drag yourself down with that. But if you if you're taking and lifting people up and pushing them ahead and they're and they're, man, they're putting 100% into it. That's pretty an awesome opportunity. Um, success comes when you don't force your, force success, but you cultivate success. Say that again. Success comes when you don't force success, but you cultivate it. You grow it. You water it. You feed it. Is that you've got, you know, it's just like somebody growing a garden. You don't throw a couple seeds out on a hard ground and the roses start coming up. Is that you've got to take in. Prepare the soil. You found it the right depth. You've got to take and water it. You've got to feed it. You've got to do all these things. You've got to prune it as it does grow. Is it takes ongoing efforts to make that happen. And it's the same exact thing is cultivating success. Grow. This is important. This is hugely important. You cannot be the same person and the same entrepreneur as your successes go up. You've got to be able to change and adapt because everything around that new platform is going to change and you've got to have new abilities new eye sets you've got to have the right mentors you've got to have the right coaches you've got to have the right people in your life and you've got to change at that new level and you've got to adjust to that new level you've got to grow into that new level enjoy the ride is every single chapter even if you go into you know imagining is that is is you're going to write a book you're going to write a movie you're going to write a novel anything like that is you're going into the idea part of it. You know, what, what, what's my concept? What am I going to do? Is that that's a fun stage, using your imagination. And then when you start writing it, well, it gets a little hard. Sometimes that first chapter is going to be the hardest one because you got to start it out. And if you build, if you build the plan up right, each chapter is going to feed the next chapter. And it's not as hard as you think. But listen, you've got to get to 14, 15, 16 chapters. And you think, God, I'm never going to get this done. Yeah, you are. You're going to you're going to have fun along the way. You're going to enjoy it. Enjoy the ride because it's time. It's time in your life that you're not going to get back. And if you just waste that time and you don't enjoy it, that's just that's a shame. And you've got to take and slow down and enjoy the moment. Enjoy right where you're at. It's funny because we'll get around people um, that I go way back with in that either in business or in, in uh uh, in search and rescue or the military or, um, 
you know, just old friends, and we'll, we'll talk about the days of struggle, whatever it's regards to, and, 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 and those hard days that we fought so hard to get out of have got some of the greatest memories. Those struggling years, and at the time, I didn't think I'd feel like that. But I go back and I look at it now, and those difficult times really meant a lot to me. You know, it's so much built the foundation. And I look, you know, it's like, wow, you know, look where we look where we started. And I'm sure glad I smiled, you know, along the way. The only time I've got really, and it's not regrets, the only things I would have uh, changed is the times where I just put too much excessive workload on myself and didn't put those built-in breaks in where you had those built-in breaks where you could add some passion to your life. Those are the only times that I wish I could change. The other times, you know, the, the spot periods of working my butt off, no regrets. It helped me get where I'm at. Um, you're going to have those times, you know, still have them till today. It's not going to light up, but I love what I do. So it does get, it does get monotonous, right? It does. You want to break, but now we figured out how to, you know, how to put those brakes in, how to put those little steam valves in to where you can release. And guess what? You come back an even better day. So lastly, don't ever quit. Don't. There's been, been so many times to where and so many things that I just kept going. I only quit once in my life. I quit one time and I don't even like talking about it. It's, I keep it. That's it's, it's in the back. It, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really nasty flame that I keep kind of private because I always want to feel that flame and what it felt like to quit on something. I did it at a young age. I got that taste of quitting on something. And you know what? I never want that taste back. But I keep it there just enough to let me know, don't quit. And I think that's what's got me where I'm at today. Now, something I've used my entire career, and we're going to wrap this up, is something really simple. Is dream, vision, plan, execute. Let's go over that for two for a minute. Dream. What's your dream? Ask yourself that. What's your dream? Because I was just talking to a young man that's got an opportunity, a big opportunity. He owns a company right now, you know, and he's in the struggling stage. He really is. And he's got an opportunity where somebody wants to bring him back to work for a at a really good job. And I asked him this, and I said, you know, remember the time when you quit your job to go full time in your business? How happy were you? And he goes, Oh man, I was I was really happy. And I said, then you got to go back to that day and ask yourself, do I want to go back into doing a job? Is that what's going to make me happy? And the answer is going to be, it's worth it or it's not. But go back to that time. Remember the dream. Vision, constantly revision where you're going. Not just your business, your life, your lifestyle. Do this down to the day, down to the week. Plan your weeks out to where you've got a little dreaming in there. And then plan, make a plan, a written plan. Everything I do is around writing stuff down. Everything I do, it's mind mapping and writing things down. It's what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and everything else. And then execute. So many people fail on this. Is they just they do all the work, they do all the work, and this it's it's paralysis by analysis. They're just an analyzing, 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 and they don't execute. You've got to go out and make things happen. So. Hey, you know what? We want to thank PNS uh, for making this happen. You see uh, our double black line behind us. Chris, thanks for all your hard work on these. Sure appreciate yeah, it. Know, I mean, you know, I didn't have much to contribute this time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Last one you killed. If you didn't see the last one, what podcast was that? So people can go uh, back. The last up. one was our number 123. 123. Um, 123. Go listen to that. That was a good one. That yeah, was a really yeah, good we one. Just, uh, we just got the replay out the other day. But uh, this, this one will be episode 124. This is episode 124. Yeah. So, hey, make sure to like, leave a comment, and share it. Uh, we sure love to hear from you all. You can get a hold of me, uh, Rennie, at DetailingSuccess.com if you have uh, topics you'd like to hear, or Chris at DetailingSuccess.com. With that, go over and follow us on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook. I'm friend tapped out on uh, Facebook for personal friends, but I am not over on Instagram. So go follow me, Rennie Doyle. Uh, we also have a couple, we've got Detailing Success over on Instagram. That's what I'm on right now live. Uh, we've got uh, PNS, we've got uh, Double Black Detail Products and Double Black Adventures. That's our newest one. We haven't really jumped into that one yet, but we're going to. So, hey, take care, everybody. Have a great day. Chris, we'll see you next time. Yeah, and, you know, uh, real quick, speaking of next time, um, Next week is uh, your buddy, uh, Michael, if you want to oh, talk about him real fast. Next Wednesday, 8 o'clock. 
same time, same place. A uh, guy I went to high school with, he just wrote, wrote a book. He's got a really successful business, family business, and I'm really excited about getting him in here. Um, he's a dynamic guy, and uh, I think you're going to learn a lot, a lot of things on that podcast. So uh, join us for that. So glad, glad you input that. So, hey, I'll talk to you here in a little bit. You guys take care, be kind to each other, and, and again, uh, prep yourself for success. So you guys all take care. We'll see you soon. See you, Chris. Yep. Have a good day, guys.